Hey, Gun Geeks, how you guys doing? Oh, come on, Internet's update. It's not <laughs> showing me your comments. Oh, dears. Yeah, there we go. Hi, guys. Sorry, I was having some technical difficulties. Little case of operator error. Um, welcome to the Fate of Destiny livestream episode number 22, which is bonkers in the best way possible. Um, for anybody who hasn't joined a live, a live stream before, or for anybody who is going to be watching this after the actual live event on uh, YouTube, the way I'm going to try to run things is I'll read your username, and then I will answer or read the username, then read the comment or question, and then respond. And I am almost certainly going to mispronounce some people's names, but I hope you don't get any hurt feelings because I certainly don't do it on purpose. If you like, um, try and let me or give me an idea of how to pronounce what I need to pronounce if I'm doing it wrong, and I'll try to fix it. But yeah, I'm probably still going to pronounce somebody's name wrong anyway. How is the connection? Is it streaming all right for everybody? On my end, it looks like it's doing pretty well, but how's your audio, video, all that good jazz? If you're having problems, usually hitting F5, refreshing your page is enough to fix them. My fingers are crossed. Alrighty. From where is everybody tuning in today? I am having a lovely fall day in Wisconsin, which means that it's like 40 degrees, but at least it's not snowing. Eh. It looks like the quality is coming in well. Awesome. Awesome. Last episode, we had a few issues. Let's hope that it doesn't go, it doesn't get spotty on us. <laughs> Lance Stone, once again, the Czech Republic. Kenneth A. Fuller, Illinois, land of corruption and oppression. Tell me how you really feel. Del Reed, Miami Beach, city of surf, sun, and sand. And crazy people. <laughs> Nate Schultz, Nate. Pronounced Nate. Sassy. I don't know, did I get that one right? Okay, um, Mirko M., or Mirko, I'm sorry. Hi from Seattle. Picture and sound are fine out here. Fantastic. Um, Marcus DeBruno, South Lake, Texas. Charger 8924, Excelsior Springs, Missouri. Dan Baldwin, Idaho. Timothy John Larson, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okami Jigoku, Indiana. <laughs> Alessio Baldi, the dark side of the moon. Listening to a little Pink Floyd, are you? Aaron Manning, Southern Kentucky, near Cave City, the home of AIM. I've been there! Bo Cantrell, hello from West Virginia. Well, hello from Wisconsin. Okay, you guys have already seen the picture. It's just down below where this video is streaming. I totally breached a door. It was really exciting and super, super fun. I don't um, shoot shotgun a whole lot. I did go, would you call that trap or skeet? I don't know, I shot clays with Nate Schultz at a Z85 who is totally watching this. Oh, Aaron Manning, I know, I missed it and I cried. Oh, Buckets, what did you miss? When I, you were there. Oh, when I was in AIM, right. <laughs> Derp. Took me a second. Oh, oh gosh, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Glenn. McGillivray or McGillivray? I don't know. Nova Scotia. <laughs> Chris Miller, um, a closet boarded up with duct tape. Does that mean that you're safe from the zombies then? Out of curiosity, do we have anybody who's tuning in to the live stream for the first time? Just, you know, haven't tried it out before? Ah, John Frazier, Duke Frazier, reading you loud and clear from Rapid City, South Dakota. Todd Weiger in Pennsylvania in the house. 
Bradley, did you use a breacher choke or just a normal load? Um, uh, just double lot, um, buck. It so just, like a charm. yeah, it worked like a charm. It absolutely did. It was quite effective, and insanely fun. Apple iPhone greetings from Sweden. Ooh, Jason Fry, my first time today. <laughs> Todd Weigrin, me, yay! Plinks for Fun 1982, live for the first time, usually watch on YouTube. Oh, it's way more fun doing it this way. Although, I post the videos up on YouTube for the people who have asked me to post it up on YouTube. Time, well, I probably, know, I the, know. It's all the shooting and all the... Yeah, I have a bunch of video that I just on. recorded lately. I think I've had uh, three shoots in the last four days, which is kind of crazy. That's even a little bit, like extra busy, busier than normal for me. Oh, man. You have to be careful when you open these because they're so fizzy. They sometimes fight you. All right, let me read up some, read some comments over here. Mike Ham, my second and last one for a while. Gotta go back to night shift next week. Aw, womp womp. Well, I hope it goes out, or it goes well for you. I know some people who um, really struggle with night shift. Especially because your body tries to do all the things that it normally does at night, you know, when you're normally supposed to be sleeping. Bo Cantrell, proud three-day owner of my first handgun, a Smith & Wesson SD9VE 9mm. Oh, I've heard some good things about those. I haven't tried it out, but I've seen them in movies an awful lot, surprisingly enough. So how are you liking it? I always have, uh, whenever I first get a gun, I gotta get to the range, like, right then. It's like a... Like a kid with a new, a new toy. I gotta play with it immediately. Oh, I um, just had a fun idea. Anybody who is a, a regular, or you've been, uh, you've tuned into a live stream before, can you welcome our newbies to the stream? Like, for instance, um, Timothy and, um, I believe it was, was it John? <laughs> Eric Kimichek, I'm a live stream veteran. Yes, you are. Jason Fry, I shoot before I buy. My uh, shop has an awesome rental program. If I ever have the option to rent before I purchase, I definitely do that. Once in a while, I'll find something that I want to get that's a little, um, Mm, uncommon, I guess. And then I'll just go ahead and buy it sometimes or I'll, well, regardless of whether or not I can rent, I always end up doing a ton of reading and watching a ton of YouTube videos. Timothy John Larson, what is your water of choice for this evening? It is Cherry Limeade and it is absolutely delicious. I often end up going for this one. And they're like, 68 cents and it forces me to hydrate myself so I can't I can't fault it <laughs> Glenn McGill gosh I wish I could pronounce your last name I'm so sorry McGillivray welcome noobs Ed Boog I made it to another show with FOD <laughs> Plinks for fun 1982 oh I like that one me too <laughs> Alessio Baldi, is that a bottle of gas with some water in it? Yeah, I don't understand why these are so like hyper like, carbonated. But when you finally can encourage it, you like coax it open and without, you know, destroying everything around you. I'm always super, super careful about it because I've learned that the hard way and had water just spilling everywhere. I, I'm pretty sure that right before they package them, they just shake them up for the unsuspecting victims. Timothy John Larson. Nice. I'm a fan of them because I don't care for the taste of water either. Yeah, and with all the studying I've done for biology and anatomy and physiology, I know just how important water is. But I still can't make myself drink it often enough. I'm like perpetually dehydrated. Keith Peterson. Will we ever see De a Destiny vid shooting the World War II classic M1 Grand? That'd be lovely if I could get my hands on one, I would definitely be interested in that. Although, 
at the moment, I don't have any immediate access to one. But one day, it'd be nice. Hey, hey! By the way, that's a fun username. First heard you on Talking Lead. Sweet! I really enjoy Zeke and Left Hand. They're very pleasant individuals. Alessio Baldi, did you say F you? Um, absolutely not. I don't do that. I mean, I don't have a problem if people want to swear, if that's, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life or anything. But I choose not to do that, especially on my videos, because I want it to be, I want to keep a kind of family-friendly environment. It's really wonderful how many um, youngsters, which I say youngsters, even though I'm young myself, but I mean like kids in like middle school who watch some of my videos. And, well, I like that. I want them to be able to continue watching them without like having to you know, hide it from their parents or something. Like, oh, I watched Fate of Destiny and she said the F word or something like that, you know? I just like keeping it family friendly because shooting for me is a family sport and I want to be able to encourage other families to get into it in the same way that my family enjoys it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Okami Jigoku, hey Destiny, did you get my better sketch for the patch design? Not, if you sent a second one, I didn't get that. I can maybe check my spam folder to see if it just like randomly went there. I did get the first one and I definitely chuckled. I thought it was really cute. So thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I just haven't seen, haven't seen the second version. Um, shoot fast fun. Hi, Destiny. Hi. Welcome back. I forgot you joined the last time. That's right. Dmitry Volkov, is there any rifle training in your future, Des? If so, what sort of chest rig do you use slash have an interest in? Ooh, that is an excellent question. Yes, I definitely want to do some more rifle training. I've gotten, I've got, I've dabbled, I guess you could say, here and there. Um, a couple classes I've taken, part of the training included carbine or carbine. Honestly, I say it both ways, so which, whichever pronunciation you prefer. I, de I definitely would like to do some dedicated rifle training, though, because my rifle skills are not up to par with my pistol skills, and I'm not saying I'm some kind of expert, because I'm not. I still have plenty more to learn, but I'd like to be able to get those, you know, long gun and handgun shooting, at least equivalent, as far as my skill level goes. Uh, as far as chest rigs go, I did a training event not too long ago where I borrowed somebody's chest rig. Um, it just had one trauma plate. Um, on the chest, and it was very, like, minimalistic in its design. It had uh, three mag pouch holders for uh, rifle mag pouches, and then it had three pistol mag pouch holders. So I like that idea that it wasn't, like, a really huge, heavy contraption, and I was able to adjust it to fit my smaller frame, which is surprisingly more difficult than I thought it would be. William Prophet, thank you for the lack of profanity. My littlest loves to watch you too. Aww, see, that's exactly the, the, the reason why I, I like keeping it family friendly. I want to encourage as many people to enjoy the sport as possible. Aussie Wombat 1, has little sister come down from her 9mm high yet? Oh man, she is still really thrilled about that. Um, she just, for those of you who uh, weren't aware, she finally decided she was okay with shooting 9mm for the first time, just recently, and oh my gosh, was she so excited. She's just, Dast, I did it! And actually, I think we still have her target because she brought it home. She was so proud of herself. She shot my M9, and she shot the CZ-75. She even shot Dad's P226 Platinum Elite. Nate Schultz, man, oh man. I sure hope I can shoot a SIG Platinum Elite again soon. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Um, but, sorry, I lost my place. I do that frequently because I'm such a bad rambler. Oh, I remember. So, she shot 9mm and she shot it really well. As a big sister, I was just massively proud of her. And that, like, glow she had. Um, just beaming. She was so proud of herself. It was really wonderful to see. She was really cute. I mean, SOD sister of destiny. SOD sister of destiny. That's funny. Oh, Aussie Wombat. I have a little friend who's joining me for this live stream. 
his this, name? His name is Whiskey, and he is a wombat. Because, of course, wombats have to have W names, and this one lives in Wisconsin. So, he's hanging out. Oh, I got another little desk friend. Peter Duffy um, contributed these little bitty bears to... Oh, he sent... He and his wife sent one to me, and then they sent one for the Helping Hands Project winners. And I just thought that was so adorable because I am a girl and I, I still go duh over that kind of stuff. So they hang out with me on my writing desk, which is kind of a really huge mess, but they look really cute. I'll have to take a picture sometime after I've like cleaned up some of my stuff. All right, uh, I was gonna read a comment and then I lost it, it moved. Ah, here we go, Ed Boog. Did you see on the news about the Sparks, um, Nevada shooting yesterday? Any comments? You know, I heard about it, but I haven't yet looked into the news reports, so I don't really have an idea of what happened. Just that it did happen. Todd Weigren. I had a problem with the Beretta Nano. Have you? What problem did you have with it? I haven't had any issues with it. Like, it's functioned fine, but um, it is a little bit snappy. Not terribly surprising considering it's a lightweight, you know, 9mm with only like 3 inches of barrel. But the bore axis is a little bit high for me. So, I like it for how convenient it is, you know, to be able to conceal and whatnot. But I don't end up carrying it um, terribly often. Because I don't shoot it a whole lot. Alright, next comment here. Alessio Baldi. When the man with a forty-five meets the man with a rifle, you said the man with a pistol is a dead man. So keep training with rifles. Yes, indeed. Just two seconds, I dropped something. Okie doke. Jennifer Young, that's awesome! 9mm is awesome! And now SOD can enjoy- oh, I'm gonna have to tell her you said that. She's gonna get the biggest kick out of that. Like, SOD! Yeah, it is fun having that. I mean, we're she's a, a bit younger than I am, so it's nice having something that we can both relate relate on. How much we enjoy shooting. Okamichi Goku. Yes, the Mo is able to lock and has a slight well and is adjustable and is very well bu built. And the A2 is just a fixed run of the mill, but still a good solid stock. Oh, Dmitry Volkov. That's awesome. She's obviously had uh, two great teachers. Duh. Um, I did give her a, a run through on how to operate my M9, you know, with the that kind of wonky slide mounted safety, which by the way, I really don't like that. That is the one thing on the pistol that just, bleh, I don't prefer it. But she already had, um, my dad had already taught her, like, the fundamentals, and she had been shooting like a boss with the twenty two. It was just a step up, and we didn't want to, like, pressure her into it. And she took it at her own pace, and she's just pleased as punch. Jennifer Young, update on the Helping Hands Project. I had a couple of the YouTubers ask me, ooh, I have recorded the video, so I just am finishing uh, the production of it so that I can publish it to YouTube, but you guys will find out the winners very, very soon, and I'm super excited. Ooh, um, I got that a new... you know who won. I do know who won. But I'm not gonna say anything until the video goes live and everybody has a chance to see it, and I can send out emails to everybody. So when are you doing that? Um, well, I should have that production finished up tonight, so I should be able to post that live tomorrow. Today's Tuesday, obviously, live stream, so Wednesday. Um, and I'm holding this in my hands because this was a donation that just sneaked in right at the right before the giveaway ended. And this is an action camera mount. And this was donated by High Desert Tactical, but it's going to be included in that grand prize with the, the camera and the software. So tune in Fate of Destiny or youtube.com slash fate of destiny tomorrow to find out. Uh, okay, here we are. Thomas Armstrong, grr, I will watch you after the post. I can't get the video. 
Oh, darn, I'm sorry that's not working out. Did you change bandwidth? That might help. Um, Charger8924, do you ever watch Kirsten Joy Weiss's videos? Yes, I think she's wonderful. That, that lady is quite a shot. I mean, go figure, she competes and she wins. So I guess it's not surprising, but it's, yeah, but it's wonderful to see. I just like watching people who know how to shoot, shoot, you know? I guess for me, it's the equivalent of some guys watching, you know, professional football or soccer or whatever. Because I'm not really big into sports unless it's the shooting sports. David Lloyd Humphrey, I enjoyed seeing your video about shooting with Kirsty and that 500 Smith & Wesson. Thank you! I had a blast with that. And, oh man, Kirsty is so nice. She's just a really, like, sweet lady. It was great being able to actually meet her because I watched her videos with Brandon on Brandon 401401. So that was, that was really cool. A little bit of, just like meeting a celebrity, sort of. Jennifer Young, I got to go shooting with two girlfriends of mine this past weekend. It was so much fun. We're all new shooters. Just great fun. Oh, that's wonderful. It, I really love when I get to in introduce my friends to the shooting sports, especially because it's just a guarantee that they walk away with this massive grin plastered on their face. And I know that I, I got to have a little bit of part. Uh, I played a little bit of a part in giving them that smile. That and... I had one friend, actually she was a boss of mine, who knew that, you know, as a hobby, before I quit my day job, that I wrote about guns and made gun videos. So I was able to introduce her to the shooting sports, taught her how to operate firearms safely, and went over the rules, went over like the basics of handling and everything, and she ended up loving guns, so victory! One more for our team. MDS556, what are your thoughts on Glocks? I just picked up a Glock 19 with True Dot Sights for EDC. Um, I know a ton of people who absolutely swear by them who are totally nuts over them. I think that they're a great gun for the money, but I don't prefer them because of their grip angle more than anything. And it helps a little bit with uh, the Gen 4s where you could um, have... A more customized feel for it. Yeah, by swapping out that back strap. But ugh, Glocks don't work for me as well as some other guns work for me. I guess I just end up having a little bit of a preference for full metal guns as well. Just, But that doesn't mean that I don't like Glocks. Alright. Dmitry Volkov. Des, you can get a kit from Beretta that will make it a decocker only. <gasps> Seriously? How have I not found that? That would be really, really awesome. If you could, like, PM me a link or something so I can look into that. That would be awesome. I have, I, you know, I thought that there would have been something like that out there, but I, I couldn't find it. I guess I wasn't looking in the right places. Charger8924. Very punny statement. Had a blast shooting. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Nate Schultz. The grins on new and first-time shooters is one of the greatest things to see. Ah, totally. I still grin like that, and I've been shooting for years. Not that... Well, I just, I can't help it. I get really enthusiastic. I enjoy the sport so much. Get Eric Kamichik. Shooting a gun? What is it? We don't know what that is in Brazil since 2004. Hmm. Womp womp. That is such a bummer. Jennifer Young, got to shoot an M&P 1522. That was way too much fun. Oh, I've heard a bunch of people like those, those 22s. Although I actually don't shoot a lot of the semi-auto, well, a lot of the magazine-fed Smith & Wessons. Mostly, if I'm shooting a Smith & Wesson, it's a, it's a revolver. Marcus DeBruno, took my girlfriend shooting yesterday. The two ladies next to us were brand new at shooting and one turned her 22 pistol toward herself and nearly looked down the barrel while it was loaded. I freaked out. Holy cow. Um, wow, that could have been really scary. That's why it's important when you take a new shooter to shoot you don't shoot. 
Yeah. One of the practices, I don't know if you heard dad, but one of the practices that uh, we have anytime we introduce somebody to firearms is that when we take them out to the range, we don't shoot. Or we just make it all about, just make it all about that new shooter because, well, they're new and how else are they going to learn those things that they need to learn if you're not right there guiding them, you know, not to undermine the intelligence of your friends that you're bringing out. It's just a matter of safety. They don't have the safe habits that you develop after being a safe shooter for a while, you know. And I don't think you can really be too safe. Especially when you're shooting with somebody else, uh, newer shooters can be unpredictable. So, that's, that's, that, and then preparing and learning safety and everything uh, cold, without any ammunition, like even in the room, I think is really important, personally. All right, let me get into some more comments. Chris Smith, check out the Indiana Run and Gun Project on YouTube. We do tactical styled shooting as well as defensive drills. <laughs> Jason Fry, MDS, love the M9, but it's a big old gun. Yeah, it sure is. I've done a lot of training with that M9. It's kind of my beater gun because it takes all the abuse that I've dealt at and dealt it. I don't think I've cleaned it in like 2,000 rounds. <laughs> it's still running. Paul G, M&P 1522 is just a blast. I just got ATI GSG AK4722. It's just as fun. Oh, I bet you that looks like fun. Glenn Guy, who I keep mispronouncing his last name. I'm so sorry. McGillivray, have you tried a 0.9mm? I have not. I Sounds familiar, but I can't bring to mind what it looks like. But I definitely know I haven't shot it. What's your opinion on it? Mark Rorig. Hello, Destiny. Good to see you after three weeks. Well, welcome back. I'm glad you were able to make the live stream. Oh, for those of you who um, are just, you know, this is your first time tuning into a live stream, I run it for an hour and a half to try to have as much time as possible for people to be able to tune in for a couple minutes here and there if they need to. Because I understand we have viewers from, you know, different parts of the globe and also people who work night shift or second shift or first shift. And it's hard finding a time that works well for everybody's schedules. That's also why after this video is um, live, I post it up on YouTube. Just to make it a little bit more convenient for people. David Morris, the M9 grips are a little too big for me. I had a similar problem, especially because the M9 that I bought is the 25th anniversary edition. So it had these beautiful, I think they're walnut grips, but they're smooth and round and they just added to an already fairly wide uh, grip. So I popped those on. I put the polymer like backup grips, if you will, that came in the case, but they were just about slick. They didn't have really great texture. So then I tried a Hogue which, love the hoax, fantastic, but too big for my little hands. And finally went with VZs, love them. So I want to get VZs for like all my guns. Nate Schultz, the first experience a new shooter has is usually what they remember. It's usually best not to have a negative experience. Slow and safe equals smile on the face. And I've seen so many occasions where you know, the boyfriend brings out the girlfriend for a date or whatever, and he wants to, like, show off and look how cool I am with my firearm. And this isn't everybody, but I have seen it on multiple occasions. And the girl didn't get the chance to really learn how to safely operate it beforehand. The first time she's touching the gun is at the range where she's about to shoot with live ammo. It's intimidating, there's a lot of noise, and it's kind of stressful. And she shoots it and it's snappy or it surprises her somehow and it ends up being a terrible experience and they never show up again. That's part of why I like to make the YouTube videos that I do to show people that, hey, shooting can be a lot of fun and it's totally possible to do it really safely, have a great time and to learn and that it's okay to be learning. Ah, Brian Kane, have you picked the winners for the giveaway? You just missed a, we chatted about that just a little bit just a little bit ago. And yes, it's all recorded. I'm just producing it, you know, so that it looks nice and everything. And that will go live sometime tomorrow. So keep your eye out. 
Ed Boog. Can't wait. Taking a four-day defensive handgun class at Front Sight next weekend. Oh, you'll have to let me know how that goes. I have ha I know a couple of people who have um, taken training at Front Sight. I've had opportunities to go train there, but I haven't gone out and done that. Especially because, you know, it's kind of a ways away from me. But you'll have to let me, let me know how you like it. I just generally enjoy training because it lets me have, you know, hundreds of rounds of trigger time and I learn. It's a great experience. By the way, guys, what was the first gun you ever shot? Just out of curiosity. First gun I ever shot, I don't know, some people might count it as a gun, some people might not, was a Red Rider BB gun. Lots and lots of fun. My brother and I um, destroyed many a uh, violent aluminum can with that gun. <laughs> Jofu beats. We'll just have to wait and find out. I'm not telling. Planks for fun. Remington Pump 22 Long Rifle. Lance Stone. My first time was 9mm. Bullseye! Bradley. First time shooting, single shot 22 bolt. Equals win! Ooh. Dmitry Volkov says, PM sent. Thank you. I will check that out later. I really appreciate that information. Oh, Jennifer Young, 12-gauge shotgun when I was 11 or 12. Didn't go well. You poor thing. I, oh. Shotguns have a way of surprising people, especially if you're not prepared. Uh, Jason Fry, over under 20-gauge. Uh, Glenn McGillivray, 22 rifle in scouts. Bo Cantrell, Savage 410 of my grandfather's many years ago. Uh, Pirate Eye. Hi, Destiny. Have you shot any of the Makarov eating pistols like the P64, CZ82, or East German Makarov? Actually, I have a couple of videos with the CZ82. I wrote a whole review on it. I'm very fond of it. As far as, like, mil serps go, it's cheap, it's fun. It's the, it was the first blowback action pistol that I ever shot, so that was um, kind of interesting for the shooting experience. But yeah, I, I enjoy that. Friedrich Bonnenman, Daisy BB gun, pump action. Del Reed, BB gun was my first, but a 12 gauge was my first firearm at age 10. Lance Stone, Slavia 631, age 4 or 5, CZ 75 SP01. Don't know already if it's Shadow or a Phantom or Shadow. All right, uh, Okami Jigoku. My first time on the trigger was my dad's Marlin 60, 22. I bullseyed the target twice out of 14 shots. I was super excited then. Apple iPhone. My first gun I shot was a rifle in caliber 9.3 by 62, Seiko 75, stainless synthetic. Oh, Paul G, a Taurus PT-99, 9mm. Peter Lockerby, the Ruger 1022, lol. That's, that's an awesome way to get started. Jova beats BB gun first, then a 22 h and revolver. Hey, hey, 22 long rifle Boy Scouts. Man, I wish I could have gone to Boy Scouts. Girl Scouts, we didn't do anything fun. We, like, made arts and crafts. David Morris, first time was about six. A Remington 22 semi-auto out in the desert. Still remember it. Oh, that's cool. Bradley, a Savage 22 auto that my dad still uses. Handgun newbie, other than BB? A 270. Other than BB, see, we also shot a lot of pellet guns as, a ki as kids. And then um, when I was seven, I think, I went to my first turkey shoot, shot a youth shotgun. It was only 20, but it, a 20 gauge, but it startled me because I didn't have the stock in close enough to my shoulder. So it smacked it. And so I started crying, made my grandpa feel really bad because he was all excited for me to go to this turkey shoot, but I won the turkey. So silver lining ended up though being a while before I started shooting shotgun again. And then I remembered, Oh, you know, this is actually kind of fun. Okay. Actually it's a lot of fun, but then moved on to Ruger uh, Mark III Target 22, which we definitely still have, and I definitely still shoot. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on that, though, before I moved up and 
um, started shooting my dad's um, the Springfield A1 loaded. And that was really what did it for me. After that, I was just really in love with the shooting sports. Haven't looked back. Chris Miller, first time rifle. I was five and started handgun at eight. MDS 556, 20 gauge was my first firearms experience. I remember. Stick out tongue. Father said, hold on to it. I didn't know how much I really should, though. Before that, I had only fired 22 long rifle. Alessio Baldi, 12 gauge semi auto. The first pistol was a Beretta 70. Somehow that seems appropriate. Seeing as how, you know, living in Italy and all that. Shoot fast fun. My first gun was a Rossi 410 22 long rifle. Started with the skeet. That's how I got the nickname Pull Bang. That's fun. I wish I would have uh, discovered uh, skeet and trap like a way long time ago because that is. That's reason enough for me to want to shoot shotguns. Having a, a reactive target adds so much to my shooting experience, whether it's shooting clays or knocking dinosaurs off of posts because they're evil. <laughs> Charger 8924, are you going for one million subscribers? Um, now, I don't really have any goals as far as um, subscribers. That doesn't really... It doesn't really uh, mean anything to me, except that I appreciate the people who do decide to subscribe. But I'm not ever... It's not really a goal. I just really have fun with my videos, and if you guys have fun watching them, then... Awesome sauce. Uh, okay, let me read some more comments. Wow! So many of you! Oh, holy cow! We're up to 81 people watching right now. That's pretty rad. Steve Shelton, hi Destiny and Dad. I have a special needs son that I have built a pretty sweet custom Ruger 1022. Was curious if you know of any sites that cater to special needs shooting modifications. I do not, but if anybody who is tuning into this live stream has some references, uh, please share them with Steve Shelton. Colleen May. Oh yeah, Colleen May. She does a lot of I don't know if Colleen is on this one. She, I, she, I, haven't seen her. I haven't seen her. Yeah, well, she gets she's a busy lady. Chris Miller, I FOD. Give her full name on her YouTube channel. Too. Uh, she, she is it Keeping the Peace? Yeah, Keeping the Peace 2010, by the way, is Colleen Barnett's channel. And she is a defensive handgun instructor, and she's pretty awesome. So you may want to talk to her about that. She might have some more references. Um, Chris Miller, FOD, how old do you think is too young to start learning? My girlfriend says no earlier than 10, but I want them fully trained by 10. I am not a parent, so I'll just give you that disclaimer right off the bat. And I think that it comes down to your individual kids. Do you think that they're ready? Do you think that they'll, that they can really take to heart the safety rules? That, and then there's also, you're going to be there. And I guess it's down That's to... The, to me is not the age, but the... the child understands the consequences of mishandling the firearm and it means death so if they can comprehend them my dad is sharing his his input seeing as how you know he's got that whole family thing going and i don't he said that um, he feels it's more important not the age as a number but the the mind of the child and if they are able to understand the consequences of mishandling a firearm those consequences being death, you know, quite serious. Okie doke. Oh, <laughs> Nate Schultz and sold cookies. You know, I was awful at selling Girl Scout cookies back in the day when I was little. Actually, it was really stressful to me because there was so much pressure pressure to sell a lot of cookies. And with being antisocial, I hated talking to strangers or asking people to buy cookies for me. I always was the like had the least amount um, coming into the or bringing in our, our forms and everybody else always sold more and then I always felt bad for disappointing everyone but it was so uncomfortable to me to have to like engage people and try to sell these cookies I hated it and it was part of why I'd stopped going to Girl Scouts I mean keep in mind I was a kid so that was really intimidating for me Oh, Matthew Jones says, it depends on the kid. I've seen 8-year-olds that I think could be taught to shoot, and I've seen 13-year-olds that were too young. 
As Dad of Destiny says, it depends on the kid. Okami Jigoku. If they can stand and walk on the road, then they're old enough to shoot. Or at least that's what my dad did with me. Handgun newbie. I was six. My grandpa took me out to the farm, killed a bird, and said this wasn't a toy. Stuck with me. Wow. Yeah, I imagine that would have stuck with me too. Uh, Friedrich Monenman. I'm a parent and thought keeping the kids away from the distraction of the range is better for as much as possible until they can display safety. Okay, let's find some more comments to read here. Um. Ah, here we are. William Prophet. When my kids looked at my guns with interest, I took them to the range. You need to redirect their curio curiosity to realize how dangerous they can be and how they're not like on TV. Um, ooh, David Morris. Steve Shelton, the NRA has a disabled services department. I'm not sure what services they offer, but it may be a good resource. Scott Messino. I shook a Girl Scout down for Thin Mints once. I do really like Thin Mints. Now I'm happy to have my friends who have kids um, who give me their forms and say, hey, how many do you want? Like, Two. Just for me. Dan Herrer. My son has been around guns all his life. At 12, he was shooting my XD-45. Supervised, of course. <laughs> Okay, let's read some more comments. Glenn Mac... Gosh darn it, I'm sorry I keep mispronouncing this. Glenn McGillivray. Let kids prove they can handle a pellet gun properly first. My grandmother, her grandfather, sorry, always told me the story when I was little of how he had a BB gun as a kid and he shot one of his sisters and... Now they're all, you know, grandparents and great-grandparents, and she still, like, remembers that. Like, hey, you know, not exactly holding a grudge, but remembers it unfondly. Uh, Ruotonum environment. Ruotonum. Environment helps with kids, too. I know Dustin Ellerman works with a lot of kids, although I'm not sure of the age. I know his kids have been shooting from a young age. with A lot of 22, I think, too. Uh, David Morris, I agree, age is individual. I had my seven-year-old memorize and be able to demonstrate safe handling and safety rules. When he was able to do that, we went shooting. Dmitry Volkov, that's the joy of friends with kids. You can have a kid for a day, then load them up on sugar and give them back. Oh, don't forget the really noisy toys and Nerf guns with like a million darts to lose and stick on the windows and mirrors. Ooh, and stickers. My sister was little... Man, she really had a thing for stickers. I would find them on my book bag and my lunchbox and my homework. It was cute, though. Rurutonum. But even as a kid, when my dad and friends would invite me to shoot, I was always around very safety-minded people. Ooh, Timothy John Larson. Thin Mints Frozen are awesome. They so are. I wish I had some. Seriously, those are super tasty. I have a hard time pacing myself with Thin Mints. <laughs> okay, so I don't pace myself at all with Thin Mints. They're delicious. You can't judge me. Eric Michik. Um, I was in my life with guns since I was young, but 2004 came and our guns were taken. Sad. Lance Stone, yeah, I remember my first time I got shot by a BB. No, thanks. I am very grateful that my brother and I never fought or argued or anything, especially as kids, because technically the BB gun was his, and he could have had plenty of opportunity to shoot me with it, but he wouldn't do that. He's not that kind of a, he wasn't that kind of a kid and isn't that kind of a person even today, although we still give each other a hard time. But that's just in jest. Jason Fry, in Michigan, you have to have passed a hunter's safety course if you're under 14. And Dmitry Volkov, yes, giving them noisy toys is a must as well. 
William Prophet, my daughter was six, my son is nine, just for reference. Or, my son, nine, just for reference. He isn't really into shooting like she is. Dan Harer, first time Destiny livecast. Woo! Welcome, Dan. I hope you have fun. We always do. Uh, Scott Messino, have you seen those semi slash full auto BB guns? Like the draws? No, I have not. I've not even heard of that. But then again, I haven't really done a whole lot of looking into BB guns since I started shooting um, Centerfire. I do sometimes think about cracking out the old uh, Red Rider. It's tucked away somewhere. <laughs> Bradley, nerf sticker guns! Nope, those are for the adults, lol. I love nerf guns, I just don't like picking up afterwards, because... Those darts get everywhere. I did that that video a few months back where I had a bunch of Nerf guns and I was just shooting. I had a fully auto Nerf gun, which it was fully auto. It was just really, really slow. But I just found darts like two days ago from that shoot that were like hidden underneath something. It's kind of funny. Charger 8924. I had a suction cup bow and arrow as a kid. I got pretty good until my dad took it away. Oops. Timothy John Larson, that is what brothers and sisters are for. Sounds exactly like my sister and I. I'm so grateful of the relationship that I have with my siblings. I mean, my sister, just because there's a little bit more of an age difference, because she's a little bit younger. Um, there were times where she had gotten on my nerves just because I'm not a very patient person. And, well, I should be. But these days, it's, uh, it's all smooth sailing. That, and maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I happen to think my siblings are, like, rat-tacular and a half. Sorry, thirsty. <laughs> Timothy John Larson. I am a fan of noisy toys. Had quite a few growing up. Oh, man. I did, and I never understood why my mom, they drove my mom crazy. Now I do. Uh... Okay, let me get caught up here. Yeah, you know, I think this is a great time to break away and do the. We're about halfway through the live stream. Um, for those of you who are new, we're about to do the FOD Blitz. Uh, two seconds. Okay, what the FOD Blitz is, is I pick a YouTuber. We and one of their videos in particular, we go to that video and leave a comment, something like FOD sent me, uh, FOD Blitz, or I'm here because of Fate of Destiny, or something something to that effect, or get creative, have, have fun with it. But the idea is that as a, as a team, as a community, we go and visit this video and give it a little bit of love, give it some views and uh, leave it some comments. And the result, I read all of the, the comments as they're coming in. And I, um, well, I think every single person we have done a, a blitz for has sent me a PM afterward thanking us for you know, giving, them, giving their video a little bit of attention. Okay, today the user that I have picked is... Um, ah, Matt... V2099. Actually, we're, we'll put it in text so you can go find it. Matt V2099, and the video is FPK Dragonov 360 No Scope with Tactical Noob 42. Okay, so I just, in uh, your comments, you should be, you should see the channel. Oh, I picked, I picked Matt V because he's been really supportive supportive that's a word supportive of my channel and i just plain get a kick out of his videos he's kind of goofy like i am so he makes me laugh okay let me make sure and he has no idea it's coming oh yeah and he has no idea that it's coming exactly so it's gonna be a nice like big surprise for him oh i'm excited let me just bring up youtube and make sure i have m-a-t-t-v 2099 Okay, and can't help that. FPK Dragonov, there you are. All right, guys, 
Go, go, go! Blitz him! And I will read the comments. Here we are. Ooh, you're already rolling. Fantastic. Fish in Key Largo. Beware! Here comes the FOD Blitz. 40 cal jeeper. No one can withstand the FOD T-Rex Army Blitzkrieg. Should I be here? Fate of Destiny said, we should come in here and blitz your video. Please complain to management should you have problems with this. But trust me, management won't care. You have been blitzed. <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> Excavator EE. -E. Hi, we're from FOD. This is a blitz. Don't be alarmed. All right, let me refresh and see if there are new ones. Do, 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 do. Volkov 556. Blitz, blitz, FOD, blitz. That sounded kind of like a cheer. DRM Audio. FOD Blitz. Jennifer Young, we are the FOD Army. We have scoured the land for months and months to find a channel suitable for a Blitz. You have been chosen. Bow down to the FOD Blitz Army with T Rex arms. <laughs> that deserved to be read in an epic fashion, I'm pretty sure. Unless you be in Soviet Russia, you blitz Fate of Destiny. Blitz! Charger 8921, Fate of Destiny, T Rex Army Blitzkrieg. Michael Ham, FOD Blitz, Biatch! LOL. Okamiji Goku 13. I never know how to pronounce this because I know like 10 words of German. You guys are like killing me. Yeah, FOD Panzerkampfwagen Blitz. Let the FOD blitzing begin. Hey, I tried, okay? And I gave you my disclaimer. Eric K, prepared to be invaded by the FOD army. Blitz! I always get that song. It's, it's a ballroom blitz. Stuck in my head every time we do this. And that is in no way a bad thing. Randy House, FOD Blitz. The T-Rex army is upon you. Fire of the Greeks. Fate of Destiny may be blitz you. Toxic Waste. Hello, Fate of Destiny centers. Hey, bro, you've been blitzed. William Prophet. Blitzing, blitzing for Lady Destiny. Oh, now I feel fancy. Like, Don't even worry about it. I am super fancy. Uh, Buffon 07, psycho theme music plays. Welcome to the Blitz, the Blitz of F O D. Dun dun dun. Because, you know, it's really dramatic now. Rotonum, with great power comes great responsibility. Oh my gosh, that is so fabulous. Curse my love of puns. Lance D. Stone, say your prayers. This is the FOD Blitz. Kneel! Oh, sounds, that sounds vicious. Viking Knight 2012. I came, I saw, I commented. FOD Blitz. Oh, that was adorable. I got the reference. I see what you did there. That was really clever. Oh, gosh, I just refreshed and there were a whole bunch more. Jeez, you guys, you're rocking this. Matt is not even going to know what hit him. Seriously. Tampa Bay Blaster. FOD Blitz. From death. Blam, blam. John Fraser, You, sir, have just been blitzed. Indeed. Scott Lee Crew, 77. Dude, you're like the Gallagher of Russian firearms. FOD Blitz, comrade. Colt Ruger. FOD Blitz, biatch. Handgun newbie. Ah! And a lot more screaming. Ah! FOD Blitz. <laughs> that was different. Um, the Krugad JY. You have been blitzed all the way from the UK. Fantastic. 01 Greenbud. Blitz, blitz, effing blitz. <laughs> Drew Johnson. Fully automatic. FOD Blitz. T Rex Army style. Plinks for fun, 1982. FOD Blitz. Shoot fast fun. You've been FOD Blitzed! Great video. That was pretty cool. Jason Fry. FOD Blitz. 
Mark Parton, it's the FOD T-Rex Army here to support fellow gun lovers. It's all Destiny's fault. I know, that Destiny. Gosh, what is she thinking? All right, let me refresh here. There's still more. <laughs> Holy cow, guys. Henga newbie, I'm here for the Tula ammo. FOD Blitz. Alessio B. Oh, man, sometimes you reference songs that I don't know, and then I want to sing them, but I don't know the songs, and it makes me a tiny bit sad that I don't know the songs. Okay, I dropped the bomb. There is a girl by the name of Dest, and Dest is the girl is the very best, and she will blitz you, and she will win your heart. She knows just what to do. She blitz and seduce, and blitz and seduce. I don't know about that. I don't do any seducing. She waves her T-Rex arms. Sorry, Dest. I do. It's okay. And says, go, go, go! And she blitz and seduce. <laughs> Very clever, though. You even made it rhyme at one, uh, one part. Ed Boog, FOD Blitz from Reno, Nevada. I can read, really. I'm sorry. Christopher Miller, ah, I got nothing. You've been blitzed. Uh, 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 bye. Perfect. That's probably one of my favorite comments right there, I gotta say. Waffen40, FOD Blitzenstein. Um, Master7699 has a weird comment about needle pokes in uncomfortable places. FOD Blitz! Well, like, I guess that does count as a... It's a comment. A co yes, it's a comment, and it's, um, original. Okay, let me refresh again and see if there are any others. And there are. I was not disappointed. And Gnubi, I'm pretty sure I rode the FOD Blitz train here, but I got left here. Can I get a ride home? Oh, he's lost. <laughs> Timothy Larson, my first FOD blitz. Blitz, blitz, blitz. They'll read, lucky man, you've been attacked and blitzed by the FOD army. She rocks, we rule. <laughs> well, oh, that's cute. I like that. Oh, man, guys. One bad marine. Mad, FOD blitz. Not even a 600 round glockazine will help. LOL. Bo Cantrell. LOL, that was a fancy pirouette shot on the watermelon. Everybody blitz! Okay, wow. Jeez, you guys, that was incredible. That was nuts. Yeah, I think that's some, I think that may be like some of the most comments we've had for an FOD blitz. Just like, very well done. <laughs> that was funny. All that comment reading. <laughs> Shoot fast bun. I'm the dad. My girl can date when she's 30. Dot, dot, dot. Maybe. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested in dating till I'm 30 anyway. So, she and I can hang out and shoot together and not worry about that silliness. Ooh, Scott Messino. Anybody watch The Conjuring today? No, but I saw it when I was shopping earlier, and I totally had a thought of picking it up, but I haven't yet. So, la 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 la, I'm not listening. Don't tell me the plot, because I will be sad. That's a really serious threat. I will seriously be a little bit sad. Or a lot. <laughs> Lance Stone, help lower gun violence. Stay away from my daughter. Smile. David Morris, hey, when do we get to meet Dad of Destiny? You know, technically he has been in a couple of videos. He just doesn't prefer to be on camera. It's just not his thing. So, you know, I'm okay with that. And he still helps me out a ton. So, works for me. Plinks for Fun 1982. Totally need FOD T-Rex army patches. Totally working on that. And I totally agree with you because of all of these blitzes. They're too much fun. Uh, Mark Rorig, Super Destiny Blitz! You've been blitzed! Woo! Chris oh, well, uh, let me go and refresh then and go read the new comments. La, 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 la. Savage Henry 762, Desty likes to blitz. She likes showing channels love. This is what we do. Did you write an FOD Blitz haiku? That's fabulous! I love haikus. Ken Fuller, FOD Blitz from the Children of the Corn. Steve Shelton. How's it feel? What, you ask? To be FOD Blitzed! <laughs> I'm a goofball. 
If you haven't put that together by now, well, then I've done a better job at masking it than I thought was possible. And Dmitry Volkov definitely want a T-Rex army patch for my armor. How much? I don't know. I have to... Uh, we're still working on some designs. I've had a couple people send me a couple of little sketches, but we're not not at the patch state yet. When we get there, though, I will totally say something for live stream, guys, so you guys know about it. That was me going pew, pew, pew in my mind because I don't know why I made that gesture. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm done, really. Yeah. Let's read some more comments. Scott Messino, Dad of Destiny, keeps his identity a secret so we can strike at evildoers from the shadows with impunity. Well, I am Batman, so, I mean, where do you think I learned it from? All right. <laughs> Drew Smoke Johnson, we should get Dad of Destiny an extra mic so he can hear his comments. Meh. Sometimes you can pick him up from what we have going on here, but I make sure to repeat anything if he says it. Now, Lance Stone, my daughter can date when he outshoots me. Ooh, Jesse Vander Hayden, did you guys talk about XDS pistols being on their way back starting this week? With a free magazine? No. That sounds like something that I should write an article about. Wonderful. Jodine, I wasn't scared. I'm tough. I saw The Conjuring in the movie theater with hundreds of scared tweens. <laughs> Yankee Marshall, okay, I'm here. Start over. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you've always missed the Blitz, Yankee. What's your problem? Friedrich Bonnenman. Any more Smith & Wesson 500 stories? Hmm. Not... No, I ran out of ammo. <laughs> so, I have to go buy some more. They don't exactly give away that stuff. Yeah, I think I told that story, though. Yeah. It was... Gosh, it was funny. Oh, did I tell you guys the story about when somebody bled on my, my 500? Let me know. And if I haven't, I will share it with you. In the meantime, Steve Shelton says, You really need to put the FOD logo on the wall behind you! Sorry for the dramatic text. Well, he typed it in all caps, so I had to read it in all caps. <laughs> Scott Messino, hey everyone on your castle not staked, hmm, hmm. Yes, Nate wrote a lovely article on staking one's AR-15 castle nuts and why it's important and how easy it is to do. Ooh. Well, I just had like eight people tell me they haven't heard the story, so I guess well, I will tell the story. Tell who it is, though. I won't. Okay. I'm not rude like that. I won't do that. Because it wasn't his fault that he wasn't, he was just really excited. Okay, let me back up first. I'm shooting, right? And I'm shooting some video. So I'm at the range. I have the 500 out, putting a couple rounds down range, having a blast. Yeah, so then I, I back up and somebody visits the range, not knowing that I was uh, just finishing shooting up there. And they said, oh, hey, you aren't you Feet of Destiny? I watch your videos. So um, after blushing and being embarrassed, because apparently I don't know how to talk to strangers or anyone, or talk at all. Um, I offered, well, hey, well, I've got the 500 out. I'm just packing up and after finishing some, some video stuff. Did you want to put a round through it? And, of course, he's really excited about it. So I show him, you know, you need to have a good revolver grip on it so your thumbs aren't too close to that uh, cylinder gap, you know, so you don't fry your thumbs off because uh, the, the 500 will do that if you're not careful. So he's really focused, having the right grip. He's got a good stance, leaning forward and everything. And boom, fires his round. And immediately puts the gun down as quickly as possible and like grabs his, grabs his thumb. And I'm like, oh my god. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Well, um, he bled on my 500. A little bit. Thankfully, though, it wasn't because his thumbs were too close to the cylinder gap. What happened was the cylinder release... Uh, he had his thumbnail resting on the cylinder release. So with the... I mean, the 500's got a pretty hefty kick. You know, you've seen it. And it comes back like this, right? And his thumb is like this on this cylinder release. And 
The cylinder release, the texture of it kind of gripped at his thumbnail and ripped it back. So, he bled a little bit. It tore half, it of, his tore half of his nail off. Yeah. yeah, so I felt awful. Because, you know, I'm just trying to be friendly, and I'm not really good at interacting with people to begin with, but I was really, you know, really? happy that he had even recognized me, and happy to share uh, what I thought was going to be a really fun experience. And the guy told me, you know, no, don't worry about it. It was just me, you know, not paying attention to the, the cylinder release because he was so focused on not having his thumbs by that, that cylinder gap. So it ended up being okay. He had, he had what he needed to take care of his, wrap his thumb up and everything, yeah. clean off the, <laughs> any stuff. But... So uh, now my my 500 has drawn blood. <laughs> Yankee Marshall. I would have laughed in his face for like 20 minutes. Oh my god, I was like horrified because I thought, you know, my first thought was that he had burnt himself really badly. And I was just thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be a nightmare. You know, I here I am, I'm just trying to be friendly. And I burned this dude's finger off by him, you know, not showing him how to, you know, how to hold this. Properly. Yeah. I wonder if does uh, Yankee let anyone shoot his 500? By the way, Yankee, do you let anybody shoot your 500? I mean, the thing... It could be dangerous. Yeah, it definitely has the potential to be da more dangerous than some other firearms. Yankee Marshall, getting recognized always creeps me out. I'm never sure if they want to shake my hand or punch me in the balls. Wow. Nice. Um, I always, almost always end up blushing and just being like, ha ha ha. You, you know who I am. Whoa. This is weird. Cool. But that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marshall. That sounds like a personal question. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> um, Mark Parton. Dead of destinies in the Black Ops branch of the T-Rex army. If you see him, you must die. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, Scott Messino, when his finger came off, did you yell out loud, FOD Blitz? Um, no. No, I did not. Immediately I asked him, oh my god, are you okay? What happened? And he was kind of embarrassed because, I mean, it's not exactly the most masculine kind of injury to be like, I broke a nail! Oh my god! I'm never shooting those gun things ever! But because apparently if I were to break a nail, I would be some sort of debutante. I don't know. Um... But yeah, so he wasn't, like, really freaking out about it. He was a little bit embarrassed, but he said even so, he had a great time shooting. So, you know, <laughs> what you gonna do? Um, Alessio Baldi. Only good girls can handle that 500. It is gonna bite everybody else. Yep, maybe that's what it was. But I think we all have to be mindful of when we're allowing people to shoot our guns and Oh, definitely. Um, Dad is making a point over here about how it's important to be mindful of safety and showing somebody how to operate your firearm when you go to let a stranger handle your, your guns. Yankee Marshall, I will let someone shoot my 500 if they seem competent. I am less likely to let them shoot my 460. It is harder to handle. Ooh, that means I have to shoot one. Sweet. <laughs> Todd Weigrin, I broke a nail watering my herb garden once. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. That does sound a little bit girly if you, uh... Was it after you football have... practice? <laughs> Dad's yeah. saying, was that after football practice? Or working on the car. Or, you know, working on the car. <laughs> Dmitry Volkov, a man can tolerate incredible pain to not look like a wuss in front of a girl. Apparently, I wouldn't know anything about that. Lance Stone, I think I saw Dad of Destiny in an Iraq veteran 8888 YouTube shooting day. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Parton, so you were both blushing that day then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, yes. I uh, Lance Stone, I saw a girl getting hit by a ricocheting bullet. Still smiled for a camera. <laughs> I'd probably be mad more than anything. I don't, um, it's my personal tendency to when I get hurt, 
whether emotionally or physically, I just kind of skip over being hurt and go right into being mad, which is, <laughs> I don't know whether that's actually a productive or a good way of dealing with pain, but that's basically like, um, one time I was at work and one of our knives broke. And so I have a cut here where it cut off some of my knuckle. My first reaction was to swear at it. Like you are awful, you awful thing. And I got mad. And it was funny because nobody knew I was hurt right off the bat because I just went straight to being like, Arr! about it. And it scarred up something interesting. Ooh, Alessio Baldi. The first time I let a friend of mine shoot my rifle, he opened an arc oh. on his forehead with the scope Scopius. eyepiece. Not funny at all. It took months to convince him to shoot a scope rifle again. Yeah, scope kiss or scope bite. Ouch, 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 ouch. Fortunately... Ooh, I missed this comment. Yankee Marshall, come to Washington. I will let you shoot my snubby 460. Um, yes, please. Ouch. Yeah, d Dad and I would both love to go to Washington. I have some friends out there that I've met, well, met through YouTube and Facebook, and I've seen the pictures. It is totally gorgeous out there, um, from what I've seen anyway. Uh, William Prophet, friend of mine and new Glock owner, took his gun out and the slide hit his thumb. I have had heard of such happening, but I had to admit, being amazed that he didn't think of that. Oh yeah, did he did he have it behind the slide like like that? I imagine that would bite. I'm very grateful that my introduction to shoot the shooting sports was um, very very safe, and that my dad has well he took care of making sure I had an idea of what I was doing before I went and handled the gun um, with live ammo. That wasn't the first time I'd ever um, seen firearms or handled firearms. And so I haven't had any of the really unfortunate experiences of, like, um, well, injuring myself, you know, because I didn't know how to handle a firearm safely. So that includes no scope bite or scope kiss and no, um, no, like, injuries to my hands or anything. Although I did one time, um, I got a, a blood blister. I was racking my M9, and, you know, it's, it has that exposed slide, and I wasn't paying attention to where my hand was because I was um, training and I was trying to do something quickly. And so I caught um, the side of my pinky in between, like right in the chamber. So as the slide came forward, it just, yep, nice little pinch. I bled a little bit. Actually, I bled for the rest of the training event, but I wasn't about to stop the training event that I drove all the way down to Kentucky for just because I got a little bit of blood. I just made sure that I didn't bleed on my gun, and then it stopped. Um, David Morris lived in Washington State for several years. Definitely worth the visit. I guess that just means we have to go. Matthew Jones, hi. I'm Matthew, and I've messed up my thumb with my Glock. Yes, I did, and still do feel stupid. Aw, well, you know, it happens. Uh, Jason Fry, my friend's dad got hit by a ricochet from Ted Nugent's arrow. Don't know who was more embarrassed. It just slapped him. That must have been interesting to see. I hope he was okay. Brian Kane, today I got my first Victorinox Swiss Army Knife. A CRKT Ripple and a Maglite Solitaire. Got reviews coming soon. Cool. We've got a couple of Victorinoxes lying around. A couple of CRKTs too. And a couple of Maglites. Actually, we've got a bunch of mag lights. <laughs> Chris Miller. OMG! When I was working at Insight Range in Los Angeles. I don't know if that's LA is Los Angeles or LOA LA is Louisiana. I don't know. Um, a vast majority of the new shooters slash first time shooters would cross their thumbs across the rear of the handgun, even after I told them how to hold it properly. What I usually see with new shooters, if they don't. Which I, I give them like the cert pistol or. Or something like that to to learn on just to be safe. They usually do that that teacupping thing, you know, because you see it in eight million and one movies and television shows where you know cops or these you know TV you know heroes or whatever. That's how they do it. 
Yankee Marshall, I had an angry Ruger SBH leap out of the safe and try to go through my throat once. Luckily, I was able to smack it aside and it landed on my foot and broke my toe. Oh, Darn! Lucky it didn't get his throat. Yeah, definitely lucky it didn't get your throat. That could have been really serious. I hope you put that Ruger in its place. The safe. That is. Dan Harer, don't you love movies where the guy sticks his finger in the hammer of someone's gun to stop, stop them from shooting? Oh my gosh, I uh, haven't seen that. Oh, I have a picture that I took. Shoot, I was going to put it up on like Facebook or something, and I totally forgot about it after I took it. But um, Grand Theft Auto V recently released. If you play video games, really big, really popular, and it's been controversial or in the news because of the idea that it's controversial. It shows a lot of violence and uh, theft and crime and all that jazz. Well, anyway, there's a guide for it uh, for the people who want to find all the best weapons and whatever, whatever. And the very front of the this guide has um, one of the main characters holding a pistol. His finger is like in the trigger guard, like on the trigger. And I'm like, come on, guys. You are pointing that thing like at parts of yourself. But, you know, that's just how things are in, you know, media with television, movies, and video games. It, a lot of people who are making those things aren't actually shooters, and so they, they just don't know. <laughs> Yankee Marshall, I traded it for a Walther PPK. Oh, man, I totally want one of those. Actually, I watched your video, or one of your videos, a couple of your videos on that PPK. Looks lovely, by the way. Um, Bradley, my SBH is heading to a new home soon. Think of a Caro and a BH will be taking its place. I still want some Vaqueros, but I can only purchase so many things at a time. I gotta plan things out, unfortunately. But I think that's how it is for most shooters. That do want gun list is ever growing, right? Sorry, I'm a lot of chatter today, which is fantastic. I just get thirsty. Okay. <laughs> Charger 8924. It's Grand Theft Auto. It's not for children. It is marked as mature. And you do have to have, you know, you have to prove that you're older than 17, I believe, to, to buy a mature game. But there are a lot of parents who just plain don't know because they're not playing the video games, you know. So the kid gets excited and wants it. I know because I've seen it happen a million times because I probably played too many video games. I've spent too many too much time in like GameStop shopping and stuff. But I guess it's kind of the same way of like do you what kind of television do you let your kids watch or what kind of movies do you let your kids watch? And do you as a parent monitor what your kids are doing? Okay, let's read some more comments. Uh, Timothy John Larson. My gun want list is crazy long and getting longer by the second. <laughs> David Morris. Yeah, guns get added to the bottom of the buy list way faster than they come off the top. Yeah, that's about how things are for me. Lance Stone. Yeah, I played Wolfenstein 3D when I was five. Turned out all right, as you can see. I was playing video games as a kid. One of the things my family does together is we play video games together and we shoot together. We don't really watch TV or movies a whole lot. Well, actually, we watch a lot of movies, but we were never that that family that, you know, has their shows or whatever that 6 p.m. on Wednesday night or whatever. It's time to watch XYZ TV show. What we've always done is watch each other play video games. And it's kind of like a group activity for us. Even though one person has a controller, we're all like ex sharing the experience and it makes for some fun bonding it's way more interesting than like playing board games as far as i'm concerned uh, you know i i feel okay brian kane most of the guns you shoot are they on loan or do you own them personally some i own some are on loan um some are test and eval guns that i uh, either send back or have the opportunity to buy which sometimes i don't even get that Todd Weigrin, because of you, I want a Smith & Wesson 500 mag. Do it! It's For me, it's such a novelty gun, but I do not get tired of there's, shooting it. There's no real function for it. Yeah, I mean, unless I'm going, like, rhino hunting. Just kidding. I've never gone rhino hunting. I can't even pretend. 
insecure. I can't even say that with like a straight face. But yeah, I, I'm i personally of the mindset that I don't feel like I need to have a specific like defensive purpose for a firearms purchase. If I want one, that's enough. I guess that's why I consider myself uh, more of a collector than anything else. Because I just enjoy them as pieces of machinery. Like some guys like to own a lot of cars if they have the opportunity and the means. Modesto Homeboy. Hi, Destiny. I finally made it tonight. Computer problems. Aw, oh, I'm sorry. Well, you still have like 10 more minutes left in the chat, which... 10 more minutes left in the chat. Holy cow. Where did that last hour and 20 minutes go? Redonkulous. Todd Weigrid, my 10-year-old nephew schools me on all the shooting games. You know, I am actually, like, really terrible at first-person shooters. And you can have an, an insight into just how geeky I am. Most of the games I play are RPGs. Yeah. Because I love the story. And I like fighting with a hammer. So if I have a game that I can fight with a hammer, I am pretty happy. And I am just, like... I, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little nerdy here. Yankee Marshall... I have to have a purpose for every gun. That is why I've mastered the art of self-delusion. Perfect! <laughs> Yankee Marshall, I do not play GTA, but I have no issue with it. If punking, punching hookers is wrong, I don't want to be right. You cracked me up. Ruritonum, worst thing I played when I was younger was time killers. All kinds of losing limbs and decapitation way before Mortal Kombat. Oh man, I grew up on Mortal Kombat. Gosh, we played so Mortal Kombat, Tekken 2, good times. Jennifer Young, these chats go way too fast. I know, right? Lance Stone, damn, I'm so sleepy today at school. You are at school watching a live stream? Don't get in trouble to join our live stream. Oh my goodness. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to enable you. One bad marine. I have to go. I will link you up to my hangout if you get a chance to drop by. The crew miss you. Aw, well, thank you. I do have a dinner function planned tonight, so I won't be able to make it, but I do appreciate the invitation. So maybe I can um, work out some time in my schedule for another week or something. But thank you again. <laughs> Bradley, the FOD Blitz must warp time or something. Yankee Marshall, I play Pac-Man. Is that cool? Actually, um, according to some of my sister's friends, playing like Pac-Man and Donkey like Donkey Kong and stuff, it's like retro. So that makes it cool because apparently being a hipster is like now the mainstream thing. But I thought the idea of being a hipster was to try not to be mainstream. But ugh, I don't know. I don't try to keep track of all of that. It's easily boggling. Okay. Show some more of the prizes. Show people what. Oh, what I was going to, yeah, show a couple of the prizes. I have them sitting here right next to me, and I, I just got so distracted and involved in the conversation. Okay, this I totally love. I wish I could keep this. Uh, yes, it looks like a pill bottle, but if you read it, it is from Ares Armor, and what is inside is a battle compensator. And it, the label reads, Take for management of recoil symptoms. If symptoms persist, adjust as needed. For severe cases, reevaluate technique. And I just thought that was super clever as far as the marketing goes. Oh, so and a here is another prize. This is a Tapco uh, bump fire stock. And I don't know if my camera can show you this, but it has a custom, it has custom stippling work on it. And over here, it is engraved, and it says F-O-D. So some lucky winner is going to get this shipped out to them. And then it has this little pouch, which, let's see what's inside here. Doo -doo -doo. Parts. There are extra parts in there. All right, let me show another one. This. This is like the epic prize donor. This is from Ted Owens, who is a, another YouTuber. And it is full of goodies. I mean, you've got this shooting towel. You've got ear pro and eye pro in here. Obviously, targets. You got Leathermans. 
sweet, sweet setup. Also, we have some Phoenix flashlights. So you got the little like keychain size one and then the like everyday carry size. But wait, there's more. Um That is the Max Edition Versa Pack from YouTuber Gorilla Cat. Wow, there it is. I guess I can't use that box again. You just picked it up and it oh, it might not be in there. So for those of you guys who like Max Edition gear, this Versa Pack, here we go. This Versa Pack was donated by Grub Cat. So I have um, a Max Edition bag. Oh, I'm holding it sideways. Sorry, guys. Um, I have my own Max Edition bag, and they are as hardy as as they advertise. They're awesome. Oh, Jesse Vander Hayden. Does this look familiar to you? Um, he donated a knife. I don't want to like rip the box or anything trying to open this. Ooh, maybe this side will open for me. Well, here we go. Fire Steel, now donated by Joe Fabitz. So thank you guys who have donated these awesome, awesome prizes. Oh, I totally got this box open. I can show you this knife. Nice. Yeah. This is a pretty sweet one. Excellent. Nah, they've seen that. So thank you to everybody who donated, everybody who participated. Oh, Jennifer Young. I'm going to be checking YouTube all day tomorrow so I can watch the Helping Hands winners video. Yay! All right. Get back in there, little knife. We'll keep it all nice and pretty for whoever, whoever is going to um, own it in the very near future. There we go. Okay. I just want to make sure I've got all this together. Lantstone. Damn, how do you send PMs here? Uh, if you just want to... Let's see, add, if you add me on Facebook, facebook.com slash fate.of.destiny. That's a really great way to get a hold of me, uh, to send me a PM. Or if you have your own YouTube channel, you can send me a YouTube PM. I'm generally pretty easy to get a hold of. If I don't answer your message right away, I'm not totally not ignoring you or anything. Sometimes it gets me a bit, it takes me a bit to get through all the comments and messages that I get in a day. But I, I do pretty well keeping up with it all. Um, by the way, guys, if you haven't stopped by the Arms Guide, please do, because I'm managing editor for that site. And we have a crew of really wonderful authors or contributors there, and we post content every day. So drop me a comment, let me know what you think, and... Hopefully you find some content that you enjoy. I know I do. Also, I will have, for those of you who didn't catch it earlier, I'll have the Helping Hands video, the prize announcement, will go live tomorrow. And I am still working on that live stream from last week. Um, I just have a ton of footage that I'm going through. So hopefully I will get that up tomorrow. It depends on a couple of the other projects that I'm working on. But it will be very shortly. Um, Eric Kamichik, Destiny, what about the autographs? Uh, I've All of the requests that I've received for autographs, I've mailed them out already. So if maybe, did I maybe send one to you and it didn't make it? I guess I can try sending another one. Send me an email um, or a PM, fateofdestiny at gmail.com. And I can... Uh, Maybe just send you another one or something. Sometimes shipping internationally is a little bit of a, a little tricky. But, uh, oh, yeah, and videos every Thursday. So you will get extra videos because I'm also including the Helping Hands video and the normal Thursday video release on YouTube.com slash Fate of Destiny. I do. I have a ton of footage. I might have to, I'm probably going to keep up with the, uh, not just two videos a week, but three videos a week for a little while at least because I just have a ton of content. 
But thank you everybody for spending an hour and a half just talking with me. I really enjoy the time to interact with you and just getting to geek out about guns and gear and movies and shooting and all matter of fun stuff. And FOD blitzing. Yes, definitely that too. You're just a great group of people and I really enjoy hanging out with you virtually. Um, but our time is all up, so hopefully I'll see you next week at new.livestream.com slash fate of destiny. Thank you so much.